But first tonight, another COVID comeback. Cases have been climbing over the summer. Will it continue? Joining us tonight to talk about your health is Dr. Greg Schrank, infectious diseases physician at the University of Maryland Medical Center and assistant professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Dr. Schrank, welcome back to MPT. Thanks for having me again, Jeff. One day we'll talk about something else, yeah. <laughs> but with you it's always COVID. Yeah. And tell us what we've been seeing. What, what have you been seeing at your hospitals? Well, as you mentioned, uh, we certainly saw an increase in COVID transmission and a lot of community activity earlier this summer, beginning about uh, mid to late July and then peaking in August. Um, and, and the way that we detected that was really through wastewater surveillance. The CDC and other state labs can test wastewater, and it's our first signal usually of an increase in COVID. Uh, and, and this is similar to what we've seen in previous years, actually. Uh, going back to 2020, there has been a late summer increase in COVID-19 activity. The main difference this year was despite very high levels of transmission, it didn't really translate into any notable and substantial increase in hospitalizations or deaths. Why does it happen in late summer? I understand why it happens in the winter, especially around the winter holidays. Everybody's together, they're, they're indoors, somebody coughs and the, you know everybody gets it. But late summer, what's the theory? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think it's something that we're still trying to understand, though we do have a few years now of experience to, to try to get a handle on it. Um, I think there's a few different reasons why, potentially. One is that all of those uh, infections that occur over the winter and the the vaccinations that occur in the fall and winter as well, some of that immunity is waning by the time we get to the late spring and early summer. What we can also see is new variants emerge, sometimes some mutations that allow the virus to better escape our immune system and all that immunity we had, had been built up. And then the third thing is, as I'm sure we all know from this summer and, and the past few summers, it's been pretty hot. And so by the time we get to July and August, all that nice time we spend outdoors in the spring when it was refreshing, it's not as refreshing anymore. And so we go back inside to air conditioning. And I think the combination of some of those factors plus some of things, some things we might not understand yet likely contribute to an increase. Good theory. Um, so with this, this newest wave, what are the hallmarks of it? What are, what are the symptoms? How contagious? How serious is it? Very similar set of symptoms. I think all of the um, traditional respiratory symptoms we associate with viral infections, fever, cough, fatigue, uh, sometimes that, that loss of taste and smell that was classic with COVID, especially early on, that, that has continued. That what's important is that there really hasn't been any increase in disease severity this time around. Um, and, and I think that um, the, the one thing that may be a little bit different is some increase in uh, what we call transmissibility, um, how contagious the virus is, was something that gave this variant a little bit of an advantage this summer. Let me remind our viewers, if you have a COVID question, a vaccination question, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen, or you can send an email to livequestions at mpt.org. So um, I've had COVID. The last time was uh, about a year ago, a little bit less. I've had four vaccines. I've, I've been exposed to this thing in, in different ways multiple times. Do I really need to get another shot? Well, first, let me say you're in good company in that uh, about 98% of Americans, it's estimated, have either been vaccinated, infected, or both. So at this point, we had broad immunity across the country, which is one of the reasons why disease impact is much, much lower in 2024 than in 2020. But that being said, I think that there's still um, some risk. You know, we certainly saw some hospitalizations and severe disease from COVID this year, and that's particularly amongst people who are vulnerable, not just to COVID, but to other respiratory infections, the uh, elderly, very, very young children, or um, immunocompromised individuals in particular. And so, uh, while the COVID vaccine doesn't always stop infection, it really can reduce disease severity. And the updated boosters are very, very closely matched to the strains that are uh, circulating currently. And so um, it's uh, definitely will add protection and boost immunity beyond what you currently have. The shots have never been perfectly matched just because it's a moving target. 
That's right. It's a moving target. Um, certainly, the um, the FDA and uh, and and our regulatory agencies in the the U.S. have very strict requirements for review and approval of updated boosters. Um, and early on in the year, based on what's circulating, pharmaceutical companies decide what to target based on recommendations, consultation with experts, and then manufacturing and testing moves into uh, its next stages up until the point where it's reviewed and approved. They're starting to use the word endemic instead of pandemic. What does that mean? Well, I, I, that's a great question as well. I think uh, you were to ask um, me tomorrow, you might get a slightly different answer because really? it, it is, it's, it's a challenging concept. I think um, what's important for people to know is that it has very little to do with the actual disease uh, and, and how severe it is. Something like malaria or tuberculosis, those diseases are endemic to other parts of the world, uh, and we certainly think of those as, as pretty severe infections. So what endemic really means, I think, for us is that it's more predictable, that we, can un we understand that COVID likely circulates almost year-round, um, and that there are certain f uh, times of the year, like as we mentioned, late summer and into the fall and winter, where we can expect increases in transmission and, and hopefully not, but we may even see then large increases, particularly if there's mutations. So it's really around how predictable and the fact that it's circulating with reliability. That's what endemic means. Uh, viewer question. This is Mary who says she's 76. I had COVID in August. How long should I wait to get a vaccine? Is, is there something there that if, if you had COVID last week, there's really no need to get the vaccine today? Absolutely. It does vary somewhat from person to person, but for the vast majority of people, vaccine will uh, offer some, or excuse me, infection will offer some protection then for the next few months, usually somewhere between two and four months, depending on the individual. Getting vaccinated right after infect or an infection likely won't help with that uh, additional immunity, but um, waiting a little bit can actually uh, help make the immune response a little bit more robust. So it's actually beneficial um, to wait a few months. And it also gives yourself some time to rest after having an infection and then going right into a vaccine is no fun. Every year we've, we've had a spike uh, around the holidays. Yeah. Thanksgiving, people get together. A week later, we have more cases. Same with, with Christmas. Reasonable to expect that again. And if the viewer is thinking about when to get the shot, Maybe you don't want to wait that long, like, you know, you maybe a month before, I don't know. Yeah, give yourself a few weeks ahead of the holidays, certainly. A lot of people likely were infected, whether they know it or not, based on testing. A lot of people were likely infected this summer. Um, so, uh, you know, sometime in October, November, uh, certainly early November would be a reasonable time to get vaccinated. And, and if you knew you were infected this summer, give yourself that opportunity to, uh, you know, facilitate a, a really good immune response as well. Um, viewer writes to ask about long-term health effects for a 15-year-old boy who has contracted COVID multiple times. That's all the, the information I have, but it does open the door to, you know, some of the, the uncommon things that, that we've seen, the heart inflammation and so forth. Yeah, thankfully, so many of those complications, particularly amongst children that were seen early in the pandemic, the, the likelihood of those occurring has really decreased over time, over the course of the pandemic, and that's thanks to immunity. The other thing that's, uh, I think, important to highlight, uh, it wasn't studied as much in, in teenagers, but there was recently a, a very um, strong analysis of, um, of veterans, actually, of, of across VA hospitals, looking at comparing vaccinated individuals to those who were not vaccinated and the risk of long-term complications of COVID, which some people call long COVID, and the risk was significantly lower amongst vaccinated vets. And so another uh, good reason to go out and get the vaccine is not only can it reduce disease severity, but uh, likely also reduces the risk of longer term complications too. Uh, let's take a phone call. This is Bill in Prince George's County. Bill, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes, sir. What's your question? I think we lost Bill. Um, a lot of other shots being offered at the moment. So. You can get a COVID shot, you can get a flu shot, you can get an RSV shot, a pneumonia shot. How, how do people decide? And, and which can you get concurrently? 
Yeah, so there's, it's been studied quite well, in fact, that we can safely receive the uh, COVID flu and RSV shots all at the same time. It's convenient, you don't have to wait, make multiple appointments. So if you can find a provider that's administering all three, it's safe to do so, uh, if you're eligible for them. Um, COVID and flu together have actually been studied and it seems like it may even be better for your immune system to receive both simultaneously than separately. So there may be an advantage which, even- COVID and flu? COVID and flu, which okay. has been studied uh, quite extensively. Um, so an advantage even beyond convenience, but all, sa all three are safe to receive at the same time. Uh, viewer wants to know, uh, this is Larry. I received a COVID vaccine in May of 21. Should I get another shot? If yes, where should I go covered by Medicaid? Uh, that's great. That's an important question. Um, so uh, everybody over the age of six months is eligible to receive a COVID booster. If your last vaccine was in 2021, whether or not you, unless you were just recently infected with COVID, there's a benefit to being boosted, especially if you're at high risk. Vaccines.gov have local pharmacies listed and uh, the vaccines remain covered by Medicaid. If somebody comes down with it and if they take a test and if it's positive, there, there aren't really any firm rules about what you're supposed to do at this point, are there? Well, there remain recommendations from the CDC. What I think is one of the biggest differences this year in comparison to previous years is that there's little that's driven by testing um, so uh, or, or firm durations of isolation time. It's really driven by symptoms and improvement, which makes it much more aligned, it makes COVID more aligned with other respiratory infections, just make it, keeping it simple. So if you are infected for those next few days while you're feeling unwell, especially if you're having fevers and active symptoms, isolating yourself prevents others from getting infected as well, and, and um, which can potentially be more harmful for them. Uh, and but once you're feeling better, fevers are improved, um, then it's okay to, uh, to, to start going back about your normal activities. Dr. Greg Schrank from the University of Maryland Medical Center, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.